but on one on the one hand, it's they have DNA. It sounds like they have um, an eyewitness. They've done some work on the on the car. They've done some work on cell phones, um, location data. They've they they seem to have um, covered a lot of bases to try to put you know connect a suspect, connect somebody to the crime scene. Oh, we got it. You have the following rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against and or imprisonment for life. Do you understand? Yes. Count four alleges that you committed the felony. On the other hand, do they have direct evidence? I mean, it could be somebody who has... I mean, I you know, one thing about DNA is if somebody has touched that before, then if, if say that the defendant here has touched this this knife sheath, for example, before, that doesn't necessarily place him at the crime scene. It places a sheath that he has touched at the crime scene. They don't have a direct eyewitness. It sounds like they have a witness who saw eyebrows or something like this. But so I mean, you know, it is good in many respects, and maybe not. I they don't have the the they don't have the the bloody glove so to speak but maybe you know they have the, the knife sheath the bloody knife sheath i suppose the defense could be challenging the government's use of these technologies of using phones and surveillance cameras and pings and whatever to essentially at its worst case create a surveillance state and arguably you could say the fourth amendment protects against that because we have a right against unreasonable searches and seizures now the supreme court hasn't interpreted it that way so there could be some legal challenges that the defense could raise in that regard to say that some of those things have happened uh, as far as how persuasive is it to a jury, I think that type of stuff is quite persuasive to a jury, I would think. Certainly, it's not a requirement that in a in a criminal case that the government prove a motive to commit the crime typically for murder you have to prove that the person intentionally killed someone um and but i think most people want to, to understand why this person did that and it becomes kind of a sub proof issue of for a, a the prosecutor to say and here's our explanation it's possible the police don't have it it's possible they're saving it until trial say generally if i'm going to talk about that why the roommates didn't call police which are there also could be tremendous fear right that a person is um afraid that there's still somebody lingering there they don't have access to their phone they're they're afraid that people have been hurt i mean there's a variety of reasons again that a person could wait It's a delicate balance, I feel like law enforcement has to draw, but the reasons to keep it tight to the vest are to protect their case, to keep it from contamination, to keep a suspect from knowing, um, you, know, you know, those are some of the reasons.
This is State of Idaho versus Brian C. Kohlberger, cause number CR2922805. Mr. Kohlberger is present in court. He is in custody. He is appearing with his attorney, Ms. Taylor. I am now going to go over the criminal complaint with you. Count two alleges that you committed the felony offense of murder in the first degree. It alleges that the defendant, Brian C. Koberger, on or about November 13, 2022, in Latak County, State of Idaho, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation and with malice aforethought, kill and murder Madison Mogan, a human being, by stabbing Madison Mogan from which she died. In violation of Idaho Code 18-4001, 4002, 4003, and 4004. The maximum penalty for this offense, if you were to plead guilty or be found guilty, is death or imprisonment for life. Do you understand? Yes. Count three alleges that you committed a felony offense of murder in the first degree. It alleges that the defendant, Brian C. Koberger, on or about November 13th of 2022 in Latak County, State of Idaho, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation and with malice aforethought, kill and mur murder Kaylee Gonsalves, a human being, by stabbing Kaylee Gonsalves, from which she died. In violation of Idaho Code 18-4001, 4002, 4003, 4004. Again, the maximum penalty for that offense, if you plead guilty or are found guilty, is death and or imprisonment for life. Do you understand? Yes. Count four alleges that you committed the felony offense of murder in the first degree. It alleges that the defendant, Brian C. Koberger, on or about November 13th of 2022 in Latak County, Idaho, uh, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation and with malice aforethought, kill and murder Zanna Kernodal, a human being, by stabbing Zanna Kernodal, from which she died, in violation of Idaho Code 18-4001, 4002, 4003, and 4004. Again, the maximum penalty for that offense, if you plead guilty or are found guilty, is up to death and or imprisonment for life. Do you understand? Yes. Count five alleges that you committed the felony offense of murder in the first degree. It alleges that the defendant, Brian C. Koberger, on or about November 13th of 2022, in Lake Talk County, State of Idaho, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation and with malice aforethought, kill and murder Ethan Chapin, a human being, by stabbing Ethan Chapin, from which he died, in violation of Idaho Codes 18-4001, 4002, 4003, and 4004. And again, the maximum penalty for this offense, if you plead guilty or are found guilty, is up to death and imprisonment for life. Do you understand? Yes. And Mr. Koberger, would you like to represent yourself, hire a lawyer, or see if you qualify for court-appointed counsel? I have court-appointed counsel. Court has reviewed your application for uh, attorney at public expense. I do find that you are indigent and do qualify for court-appointed counsel. I will appoint Ms. Taylor uh, to represent you in this case. Ms. Taylor, have you had an opportunity to speak with Mr. Koberger about a uh, speedy preliminary hearing and setting this matter? Your Honor, I have. Um, we would ask the court to set the status hearing in a week or two to make the final determination. Okay. And Mr. Thompson, Ms. Jennings, are you in agreement with that? That's fine with the state, Your Honor. January 12th. o'clock a.m. Ms. Taylor, do you wish to uh, argue bail at this time? Your Honor, I would like to ask the court to consider setting a bond. Uh, Mr. Koberger right now is on a no bond hold. I am going to leave uh, the bail set at this case as no bail at this point in time um, until I have additional or further information um, at a later date in time. Remain in custody on the no bail pending further proceedings in the 